What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today we're going to be doing a set review of Vivid Voltage, the newest Pokemon trading card game set due out on November 13th. There are some powerful new Pokemon VMAX and amazing rare Pokemon to behold in this set, and I'm really excited to show them off. But before we do, let's check out FullGripGames.com. If you're looking to get all of the best cards from Vivid Voltage, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com. We have got pre-orders available now for singles from the set, and of course, shopping with Full Grip Games games directly supports the content I create here on Tricky Gym. If you're looking to get all of the best cards on your Pokemon trading card game online account, look no further than FullGripCodes.com. We have got pre-orders available for Vivid Voltage codes in quantities of 150, and those will be emailed out before the set drops on the Pokemon trading card game online on November 12th. And speaking of November 12th, on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online on Twitch, we are going to be doing a marathon stream to celebrate the release of Vivid Voltage. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out twitch.tv slash tricky gym and give me a follow on Twitch. We're going to be streaming for 10 hours, new cards from Vivid Voltage, and we're going to be giving away two booster boxes of Vivid Voltage during the stream. It should be a great time, so make sure to check out the Twitch channel, and of course, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com and fullgripcodes.com for all of the best cards and codes from Vivid Voltage. Now, let's get on with the set review. Kicking things off with the Battle Sense Charizard. This Charizard has gained a lot of hype so far because it is a pre release exclusive. Uh, this art in particular uh, can only be found in build and battle kits or in the staff promo version. And of course, with the recent Charizard fever going on, you have to ask yourself uh, how much will this card eventually be worth? Since the regular Charizard in Vivid Voltage is a non holo rare, this is the only version of this card that comes in holographic. The Charizard it's also pretty good, which is exciting. It's Battle Sense ability. Once during your, your turn, you may look at the top three cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. You discard the other cards. Could be good for churning through your deck and also for getting Leons into the discard pile for its Royal Blaze attack. For two fire energy, deals 100 damage, plus 50 more damage for each Leon card in your discard pile. Leon is a new supporter from Vivid Voltage, which increases the damage of your Pokemon's attacks during the turn it is played by 30. So Royal Blaze can deal 330 damage. If you happen to play your fourth Leon during the turn that you're attacking with Royal Blaze, and then you end the turn with four Leons in your discard pile, you're going to be dealing 330 damage with this Charizard for only two energy. Now, of course, if there was a card like Battle Compressor in standard format. That would make it much easier to get your Leons into the discard pile. Also, Royal Blaze taking two fire energy means that you are uh, going to have to probably welder to it or something like that. But, you know, those options do exist for fire type Pokemon. There's a lot of fire type support, welder, Volcanion, Heatran GX. You know, there's a lot of different cards that could go very well in a fire-based deck. Now, that being said, the team-up Charizard is kind of like a Charizard that came before this one, also has that uh, incredibly high damage ceiling, but the team-up Charizard has not really seen any play. So I'm wondering how much play this Battle Sense Charizard is going to see. I think that Leon is a card with a ton of potential in this set. Uh, 170 HP is definitely nothing to scoff at as far as a Stage 2 single prize Pokemon. Uh, and I have to say that the artwork on this card is absolutely phenomenal. I love it. The pose is just great. I think this is going to be a very popular Charizard for collectors, and it could even be the backbone of its own deck. Moving on with the promos, we have got the Don Fan promo. This Don Fan elicits a lot of good feels and good vibes for me because it reminds me of Don Fan Prime. It reminds me of other Don Fans that have come before this Don Fan, and Don Fan is just such an epic Pokemon with a nice history of being good. And I love fighting Pokemon that deal a lot of damage for one energy. That's my jam. I'm into it. I love it. I loved Landorus EX. I loved Halucha. I loved Don Fans. This Don Fan fits right into the history books alongside all the other Don Fans and all the other powerful fighting Pokemon that do a lot of damage. 120 damage 
for one fighting energy earthquake also deals 20 damage to each of your own benched pokemon that earthquake attack could be paired with bampy for some pretty serious retaliate style attacks now earthquake also notably one hit ko's pikachu and zekrom tag team gx which is a very popular deck right now an expanded format you have access to muscle band you have access to strong energy other cards that could potentially boost don fans earthquake attack damage output and then thinking about the landscape of expanded you know can a stage one single prizer actually last an expanded format maybe not but you know shaman ex is getting banned so it's just going to be crobat and dedenne city and if there's one pokemon that is extremely good at knocking out crobat and dedenne's it is this don fan even in standard format easily disposes of crobats and dedenne's for just one energy so i think for that reason alone this is a card that is worth thinking about it easily one hit ko's Crobats to Denny's and Picaroms with a little bit of extra help. If you've got the fighting dojo and you happen to be behind on prizes, uh, what you deal 40 more damage, meaning that you could deal 160 damage with a vitality band. You're going to be dealing 170 damage, which can one hit KO and Eternatus V Max. So I think that uh, it is certainly a very interesting attack. Obviously, Don Pan does have to compete with Excadrill. But Don Fan doesn't mill itself, so it does kind of have that appeal. You can build the deck differently. You don't have to build the deck as a super hyper aggressive mill style deck. And then, of course, Heavy Impact for a fighting and two colorless will deal you a nice vanilla 90 damage. Up next, we've got Gorman Dies Snorlax, and the promo artwork on this thing is top notch. Just look at that Snorlax. This is how I imagine all of my Snorlax is looking now. Tropical Beach is a very difficult card to get. It's a very expensive card in expanded format. It was only limited to world championship participant participants almost 10 years ago, okay? So at this point, uh, any card that reads like Tropical Beach has got to get us excited. We love Zashi and V for its Intrepid Sword. Can end turns using Intrepid Sword, even if you don't play any metal energy in your deck. Having a one prize option that reads similar to Tropical Beach is amazing. If the Snorlax is in your active spot, you may draw cards until you have seven cards in your hand. If you use this ability, your turn ends. So this is a great setup ability for decks that want to set up a more complex strategy without benching bench liabilities like Dedenne and Crobat and Oracorio GX, things like that. So I think that this attack could be, or this uh, ability could be very good for some sort of setup decks that uh, that uh, play Scoop Up Net, because I think this card is very good with Scoop Up Net as well, since you can Scoop Up Net the Hefty Snorlax, get it out of the active position after you filled your hand with Gorman dies, and then go in with another attack. Now, if you're playing the Snorlax in a in a Porygon Z deck, you can actually use its Body Slam attack. It is very expensive, though. For four energy, it's going to be dealing 100 damage. You flip a coin of heads. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. I think that really would only see play in a Porygon Z style of deck where you could accelerate as many Recycle Energies onto the Snorlax as you want. But in other decks, you're probably not ever going to be using Body Slam. You're just going to be using Scoop Up Net to get the Snorlax out of the active position. Now, with all of that good stuff being said, I would be doing you a disservice if I did not say that Marnie exists, right? Obviously, Gorman dies. Very cool ability. Wow, I get to set up my hand and draw until I have seven cards. And then Marnie gets played, and you get stuck with a four-card hand, whatever the next four cards are, on top of your deck. And then your Gorman dies just went for naught, right? Nothing for nothing. So what's the point of using Gorman dies if half of the decks in format just play four copies of Marnie? It's a good question. And I think that question is going to threaten Snorlax's playability throughout its time in standard since it is printed so close to Marnie. And uh, I think that uh, setup decks do also suffer from the amount of Marnie being played. So it's a very cool ability, but I wonder if these Gormandai's hands are actually ever going to be able to stick. The final promo from the set, Lugia is an awesome Pokemon, obviously, 130 HP, amazing artwork, great collectible card. Wind pressure, your eyes gotta go straight there, 250 damage, four energy, 
If your opponent has five or fewer cards in their hand, this attack does nothing. So obviously there are ways you can cheese your opponent's hand. You can stamp them to six, right? And then they have six cards guaranteed. So then you could win pressure. You can also Marnie them and then do something crazy with like surprise box, which gets you know, an item from your opponent's discard pile back into their hand or a card from your opponent's discard pile back to their hand. You know, obviously you could like, you know, surprise box them a couple of times, but like you could horror house or something like that, prevent your opponent from playing cards. Uh, you could Erica, uh, but like, you know, is it is any of that really going to be worth it to try and cheese your opponent into having a bigger hand so that you could win pressure for four energy? You know, probably not, unfortunately. I think that the Lugia is just a very cool card, but probably going to end up in your binder. The Speed Drill isn't very good, but it's very cool because it's got the Elusive Master ability. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is the last card in your hand, you may play it onto your bench. A Stage 2 Pokemon getting instantly played onto the bench is awesome. It's just like the Greninja GX, which has got the ability of the same name. And when you play it from your hand onto your bench, you get to draw three cards. Kind of reminds me of Maxi's, uh, what, Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick, RC's eight, eight, Archie's Ace in the Hole, these kinds of cards. Uh, the end effect of getting the B drill into play, though, and drawing three cards is not going to be necessarily something worth kind of getting uh, you know, building your whole deck around though, as it's sharp sting attack for a grass and a colorless only deals 120 damage. This Yon Mega has got a cutting wind attack for four colorless energy. It does, uh, <laughs> I want to make a joke. I want to make a fart joke, but I'm not going to, I'm going to spare you guys the dad humor. I, I, I too do that. <laughs> Celebi Amazing Rare. The Amazing Rare cards, if you have not seen one in real life yet, they are incredible. The scans do not do these cards justice. They are gorgeous. They're texturized. It really looks like a paint splatter on the card. I love the way that the paint splatter is breaking the frame of the card as well. And they have all these absolutely crazy energy attack costs. That's like the downside of the Amazing Rares. I think they're incredibly collectible. I certainly am going to be trying to get my hands on all of the Amazing Rares because I think that they would just look absolutely insane in a binder one next to another. And some of them are even relatively maybe kind of playable. So let's take a look at Celebi, 60 HP, two attacks for grass energy. Energy Press deals 30 damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon with decks like potentially Colossal VMAX on the Horizon, which is weak to grass. You know, if your, your opponent's Colossal VMAX has four fighting energy attached to it, you could deal, what, 3, 6, 9, 12, 120 damage for one energy with Energy Press. Is it ever going to be worth it? Nah, probably not. It doesn't really add up quite enough. And since the Energy Press doesn't account for your own energy, it's not like... Uh, it's not an attack that can really ramp up very quickly. You know, comparing kind of apples to apples, we've got the uh, Shaman Prism Star, right, which does 30 damage times the amount of grass energy on your board. Obviously, a much stronger attack than Energy Press. But Amazing Bloom for a Lightning and a Psychic reads, for each of your bench Pokemon, search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it, then shuffle your deck. It is a dual-type attack cost, Lightning and Psychic, neither of which jive with the first attack cost, which is a grass, and seems explicitly worse than Rowlet and Alolan Exeggutor. So unfortunately for Celebi, I do not think this is going to be a card that is seeing much of any play. However, it is beautiful, and I am very stoked about the amazing rares in this set. Shiftry. Look at this card. Beautiful artwork, amazing. Got like a fall landscape in the background with some nice yellow leaves. And the ability Shifty Substitution reads, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, each supporter card in your opponent's hand has the effect draw three cards instead of whatever usual effects that they had. So the Shiftry cannot be bossed around, which is really interesting. It can be, you know, catchered around with Pokemon Catcher. It can be fee-owned around, but boss's orders reads, draw three cards now. And if your opponent's got a welder, it reads, draw three cards. And if your opponent's got a research, it reads, draw three cards. So it's like, you know, oops, all hop. Your opponent's got a handful of hops now. Whatever strategy they planned on having, they're just going to draw three cards, which is funny, 
but is it going to be any good? It's Attack Fan Tornado, 110 damage for a Grass and a Colorless. You may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon. I'm not sure that Shifty Substitution is going to be powerful enough with the fact that this Shiftry has to be in the active position for this ability to be utilized because you're going to have to use Fan Tornado. And let me remind you real quick that standard format is a format with 280 HP basic behemoths that can actually get up and running with supporters that read draw three cards. Do you think an ADP cares if it just has to draw three cards? No, it does not care. Do you think Zashian cares if it just has to draw three cards? No, Zashian absolutely does not care if it just has to draw three cards because it just will draw three cards and then it'll Brave Blade and then your shiftery is done. So cool ability, but I don't think it'll see any play. Ninjask has always got a cool ability, and this one here from Vivid Voltage is no exception. Cast off shell. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may search your deck for a Shedinja and put it onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. 60 HP, free retreat, and a one energy attack absorb uh, deals 30 damage and heals 30 damage from this Pokemon. Are you really going to want to heal 30 damage from a 60 hit point Ninjask? No, probably not. But yeah, take a look at the artwork, though. I love this Ninjask. Is the Ninjask playing basketball in the backyard? I mean, that just owns. So let's go ahead and take a look at your boy Shedinja, right? Since we have to use that ability to get Shedinja into play. Shedinja is a 30 HP basic Pokemon with the Shell Survival ability. Put this Pokemon into play only with the effect of Ninjask's Cast Off Shell ability. And then it's got an attack for three colorless energy, Life Squeeze. Put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until its remaining HP is 10. So there is some sort of Wombo combo out there with like Galarian Snorlax V and you poison them and then you get energy onto the Shedinja and you life squeeze them and then you get an automatic KO. These kinds of decks have existed in Pokemon's history. I must warn you, they have not often been very good. This is probably a deck that's going to remain in a meme tier. I think the closest thing to a playable version of this strategy was there was like Raticate that you could play in expanded format alongside Zorark. And the thing about the Raticate was that its three colorless attack cost could actually be utilized with a triple acceleration energy. Since the Shedinja is a basic Pokemon, it means that getting the three energy onto it is going to be more or less a chore. We would love it if this was triple you know, acceleration energy compatible. However, it's not. So I do think that Shedinja and Ninjask will more or less be a meme deck, but it could be kind of hilarious to pull off that huge one-hit KO with Shedinja. There are ways to power it up. You could use Twin Energy, Tapu Koko Prism Star. You could use Turbo Patch. There are ways to juice this thing up. Uh, and then pulling off that crazy one-hit KO with Life Squeeze will certainly be entertaining, if not anything else. Orbital V and Orbital V Max are really cool Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max from Vivid Voltage. I cannot wait to build decks that utilize these guys. I love this ability, Eerie Beam. Reads once during your turn. If this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may put one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. That is just a ton of snipe damage that you can build up. It sprays 10 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon can't be blocked with the effect of Mew from Unbroken Bonds, and you can use it multiple times during your turn. So you can go Orbital VMAX, Eerie Beam, switch new Orbital VMAX, do it again, switch, do it again, Mallow Lana, do it again. You know, you got to have four different Orbital VMAXs because you can only do it once during your turn. Uh, you can't, you know, reuse it with the same one. But if you have four Orbital VMAXs, you could do it four times a turn, which is 40 damage snipe, which is kind of crazy. So I think that this ability is inherently very strong, and I'm interested to see what kind of deck lists pop up that utilize it. I think this card is a card that really wants to have escape rope legal and standard format, right? Because you would just play it with four switches, you could play it with Jirachis, you could play it with four escape ropes. If you had four switches and four escape ropes, then you'd really be out here jostling the Orbeetles around doing a ton of damage, right? But I think that 
The ability is naturally very strong. G Max Wave for a grass and a colorless does 50 damage, uh, plus 50 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Could one hit KO Colossal V Maxes? You know, for the most part, we got to imagine what two to three energy is kind of the magic number. Eternatus always has two energy on it. Picarom has three. Zashian V has three. ADP has between two and three. So on average for two energy, you're going to be dealing uh, like 150 to 200 damage, which is reasonable. That's just respectable. 310 HP, a retreat cost of one. A glaring weakness to fire, but that's fine. If we ignore the fire weakness, you know, maybe this could be a good playable grass Pokemon card. Or Beetle V, 180 HP, Strafe, does 20 damage and can switch to the bench in the Mysterious Wave. Does 50 damage plus 30 more damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. I really like the design of these cards, and I think that with some creative deck building, they could be the backbone of their own archetype. And then the new, what, legendary monkey thing? To be honest, I'm more of a trading card game player than a, a video game player. So a lot of times these are my first interactions with Pokemon. And I haven't learned or known anything about Zarude yet. All I know is that Zarude is kind of a gnarly looking monkey dude. And he definitely is kind of ferocious. It's got two attacks, bind down. Two colorless energy does 50 damage to your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't retreat. And then Jungle Rising for two grass energy deals 100 damage. You may attach up to two basic energy cards from your hand to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. And if you attach energy to a Pokemon in, in this way, you heal all damage from that Pokemon. I think that this is a very strong effect, obviously. Completely healing something, accelerating energy. It reminds me a lot of Virizion EX from Plasma Blast back in the day. Wow, you guys remember Verizian EX? Man, the good old days. Emerald Slash, 50 damage, 2 energy out of the deck. Now, these energy do have to be attached from hands, which does make it a little bit more difficult to pull off, but you can have cards like Viridian Forest to help get you the energy to the hand that you need in order to use Jungle Rising. You can fully heal Pokemon on your bench. That being said, Zeru's only got 210 HP. Zacian V is the most powerful attacker in standard format right now, and Zerud, if you spend time putting two energy onto Zerud, my concern is that Zerud is just going to get knocked out with Brave Blade for three prizes because of an Ultra Creation GX, which makes Zerud look a little bad. So unfortunately, I think Zerud, very cool card design, could be paired with Pokemon that are much, much bigger than Zerud. It also has got some serious Mega Sceptile EX vibes, that's for sure. Mega Sceptile EX, I'm pretty sure it's the same attack as Mega Sceptile EX, almost the same attack, uh, if not the same attack. It's definitely a card that we've seen similar effects on grass Pokemon before. Sceptile EX was never really good. Um, Unfortunately, and I think Zerud may just fall victim to the power creep in the game right now, even though it is a strong attack, deals a lot of damage, can heal a lot. Uh, there are just other stronger basic attackers out there that are worth two prizes. The Evolutions are back in this set. Love Flareon, Vaporeon, Jolteon. It's a very nostalgic Pokemon. I gotta love the artwork on these guys as well. There are a lot of Evolution collectors out there. So let's see what they do. Flareon has got an ability, Incandescent Awakening. If this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached to it, Grass Pokemon in play have no abilities. So that's really interesting. I like the fact that there are these kind of uh, specific silver bullet style abilities that target very specific other abilities you could play in your deck if you're trying to account for a specific matchup that being said with how specific of a matchup this is countering right uh grass box would have to be like the biggest deck in the game for me to want to play flareon and a memory capsule in order to turn off uh you know a grass pokemon's abilities obviously the most notable grass pokemon in format right now would be rillaboom so you could turn off rillaboom's ability but if you're playing you know a fire deck or you're playing a deck you, know, you could just knock out the rillaboom I and mean, that's that's the best way to get rid of a rid of a rillaboom is to knock it out you just use boss's orders you gust it up and you knock it out and i would argue that that is going to be a better strategy 10 times out of 10 than ever getting this flareon into play unfortunately so i do think that it is a very cool ability but, you know, there would have to be some other application that kind of uh, reveals itself for me to want to ever have to put this card in my deck.
Talonflame V is a card I am very excited about. It's just a good card. Basic Pokemon, worth two prizes, 190 HP, fire type, meaning that it inherits all the blessings of being a fire type Pokemon in standard format. We've got Welder, we've got all the best attackers, all that stuff, Volcanion, etc., etc. And it's got a super sweet attack, Fast Flight. For a colorless energy, if you go first, you can use this attack during your first turn, discard your hand, and draw six cards. I love that. I think that the turn one supporter rule really hurt a lot of decks. Having the opportunity to discard and draw six cards on a Pokemon that's got free retreats, to boot. I mean, that's just incredible and could be a huge boost in consistency for decks that really don't like going first. I think that this card could be useful in decks like Mad Party. Just turn one going first in Mad Party, you know, get an energy out of this thing, you know, discard the hand, see some more cards. Uh, I think it's a useful setup card. Obviously, there is the Marnie effect, right? So if you Talonflame V to Fast Flight turn one, and then your opponent just Marnies you, you feel kind of bad about that. That's not great. But it is a nice consistency card with a good attack, Bright Wing, for two fire and a colorless deals 160 damage and you only have to discard an energy from this Pokemon. Also has an alternative weakness in lightning and a fighting resistance. Brightwing most notably does still one hit KO uh, Dedenne GX. So attaching energy to this thing is not even a total waste since it can KO Dedenne's and 160 damage is a perfect two hit KO on Pokemon V Max. So I think the Talonflame V is a very good card. It one hit KOs Zacian V as well. And Zacian V, obviously one of the most uh, aggressive cards in standard format. Having a Pokemon that can draw cards on the first turn going first and can one hit KO Zacian's and can one hit KO uh, Dedenne GX's. I've definitely got my eye on Talonflame V and I'm gonna be looking for opportunities to play this card in the formats ahead. On to the next evolution, we've got Vaporeon, who is doing some nice little body surf here on a wave. Very majestic and, you know, maybe shooting a bubble beam or something like that. It's got the Torrential Awakening ability. This Pokemon has a memory capsule attached. I see the theme now. Yes, memory capsules required. Okay. Uh, fire Pokemon in play have no abilities. So what kind of fire Pokemon abilities are there that we might have to worry about? None. So right now, there's not really a specific use that I could see for the Vaporeon. A lot of fire Pokemon are kind of just big dudes who take energy with Welder. There used to be the Nine Tails from Team Up with the Nine Temptations. You know, you don't really need to counter that at all. That card almost never sees play. Yeah, there's the Charizard. You know, with Battle Sense, you could. Uh, you could, you know, stop Battle Sense. You could stop Burning Road on Heatran GX. Sure, yeah, but like, are any of those worth playing a Vaporeon and a Memory Capsule in your deck for? Absolutely not. So it's a nice, cute Vaporeon, and it'll probably live in the binder. Always got to look at Waylord. Waylord, 200 HP, stage one Pokemon with the Water Veil ability. Whenever you attach an energy from your hand to this Pokemon, it recovers from all special conditions. Okay. Hydro Pump for four colorless energy deals 10 damage plus 40 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. Unfortunately for Waylord here, I think that there are just better water type attackers that you can pair with Frostmoth, Lapras, VMAX, Caldeo, V, even Waylord V, probably going to take the spotlight here over this very ep epic Waylord artwork from the uh, Vivid Voltage set. Uh, I gotta love the water just like pouring out of its mouth like that, but unfortunately that math is not really going to add up in any way that outclasses any of the other established water attackers in standard format. Up next, we've got Samurott, who is competing for ugliest starter Pokemon to have ever been created. Sorry, Samurott fans. Uh, Samurott's got 160 HP in the Shell Armor ability. This Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. This is good. We did see a similar ability printed on Dreadnought V, Dreadnought V Max. Unfortunately, on 160 HP Pokemon, that takes evolving twice in order to get into play a stage two, right? Is that going to be enough to save it from a Brave Blade? Probably not. Aqua Wash for a water and two colorless deals 120 damage. You may put two energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. Now, hey, that's not too shabby. 
a pretty decent attack. Energy Denial is very good right now in the Pokemon trading card game. However, in the realm of Energy Denial, there are other Pokemon who deny energy potentially better. The Clefable is starting to pick up a little bit of steam, the one that puts an energy from your opponent's active onto the top of their deck. Yell Grunt, Hammers, all these cards are cards that see play. And then, of course, there is the, what, Torkoal V, discards two energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. I think Samurott has a interesting attack, but it is just slightly outclassed by other powerful abilities and attacks that do more or less the same thing. Come on, chat. What? Who are the ugliest starter Pokemon? There's like Quilladin, okay? And then there's Samurott. Don't talk about my boy Embor. Do not talk about Embor. Do not talk. Remove Embor's name from your mouth. Galarian Darmanitan V. 220 HP. It's got two attacks for water and a colorless. Freezing headbutt deals 50 damage. Flip a coin if heads. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And then Frozen Slice reminds me of maybe a cold piece of pizza in the refrigerator. Anybody like to have leftover pizza get you a frozen slice not frozen but you know you know chilled in the in the fridge it's usually just as good the day after you order it frozen slice get me a frozen slice two water and a colorless 190 damage this pokemon also does 30 damage to itself but those aren't really the attacks that we're here to talk about 220 hp that's pretty decent galarian darmanitan v max is what we're here to talk about 320 hp Max Whiteout for four water energy deals 200 damage, and this attack also deals 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And now is the time where we scroll to the bottom of the page and we point out the other card that people are going to want to play with this thing. Telescopic Sight. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's bench Pokemon V and Pokemon GX. Ah, it's like they put that combo in the set so that you could play it. We've got the Telescopic Sight. With the Galarian Darmanitan VMAX means you can max white out for 200 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And then you can snipe 60 damage to each of their benched Pokemon, right? Which is insane. Yeah, 60 damage? Is that That's how that reads, right? Or is this just 30, you know, plus more to... Let's read this one more time. All right, to your opponent's Pokemon V and GX. So they're going to be dealing 30 damage to everything and then 60 damage to Pokemon V and Pokemon GX, meaning that if you have a telescopic sight, you're going to be dealing 60 damage to Dedenne GXs. You're going to be dealing 60 damage to Crobat Vs, meaning that with three max whiteout attacks, you're going to be three hit KOing Dedenne GX and Crobat V on the bench since with telescopic sight you're going to be dealing 60 60 60 which is 180 meaning that you could potentially just win the game by knocking out an active and a couple of dedenes just purely by sniping them with the effect of max whiteout also dealing 30 damage to everything very important because you can play this with galarian zigzagoon if you want to meaning that you would get a two hit ko on uh, Jirachis from team up on your opponent's bench if they happen to have Jirachis down max whiteout going to rack up damage on them against Eternatus V max decks right they're going to have Galarian Zigzagoons on their bench you can max white out 30 damage to all their Galarian Zigzagoons do it again 30 more damage to all their Galarian Zigzagoons or if they have Garbodors or if they have Croagunks whatever you're going to be racking up damage on those as well now of course I can't mention the good without also mentioning the bad. If we go ahead and just scroll down the card and we take a look in the bottom left corner to that glaring, metallic-looking weakness. That hurts, chat. Zashian V eats this thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, one hit KO after an ADP. Gonna be taking an easy four prizes on Galarian Darmanitan. You hate to see it. Unfortunately, got the same weakness as the uh, the big cake, the big cake VMAX. I love to play Alcremie VMAX for fun, but unfortunately that metal weakness kind of keeps the Alcremie VMAX deck a uh, for fun deck. So I have to wonder, is Galarian Darmanitan going to suffer the same fate? We'll have to see.
If you watched my pre-release video, we got to play with Cramorant and Aracuda in the Vivid Voltage build and battle kits, and boy, was this strategy a lot of fun. Cramorant for two colorless energy can use continuous gulp missile. Does 60 damage times the amount of Aracuda you discarded from your bench. So if you discard four Aracuda from your bench, you're going to be dealing 240 damage, which is pretty significant. If you used Altered Creation GX, baby, then that means that uh, you could deal 270 damage if maybe you're playing a Cramorant ADP deck and you're going to be taking bonus prizes. That's certainly kind of interesting and certainly possible. You could do that. You could Alter Creation and then you could go Twin Energy and just start swinging for 270 damage and taking bonus prizes with your Cramorant. That's an option available to you. 240 damage is pretty significant, though. You're going to be knocking out Zashian Vs. You're going to be knocking out Dedenes. You're going to be knocking out Crobats. All you have to do is stream Aracuda. Aracuda, cute little fish here. Got to love the Cramorant there in the background as well. It's got the Flock Attack. Search your deck for up to two Aracuda and put them onto the bench. Wow, they multiply. That's great. I love that. I love a well-designed basic Pokemon. Good job, Pokemon. That rocks. Now, if only there was a supporter card that could get you all four of your Aracuda back from the discard pile. I, I, gee, I wish that they had printed it. Oh, wait, here it is. It's Nessa. Nessa puts up to four in any combination of water Pokemon and water energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Very convenient, Pokemon. Very convenient. There we go. All right. So we've got the Nessa. Strictly better than Fisherman if you're going to be playing a card like Fisherman in a water deck is just strictly better, right? Because he can get you water energy or water Pokemon. Now, obviously, Fisherman is still good if you're playing, uh, you know, a deck where maybe, because I think Fisherman can get back regular energy, right? I'll have to edit that out if I'm completely wrong. But Nessa can get you the water Pokemon and the water energy, which is very good. And then there is the Barrascuda as well. Let's check out Barrascuda. Targeted Skewer. Stack this 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon for each damage counter on that Pokemon. For one water energy, that is a cool attack. It's like Esper, but it only costs one water energy. And that's very strong. If your opponent's bench Pokemon has 100 damage on it, that means the Targeted Skewer is going to deal 200 snipe damage for one energy, which is nuts. So if you had some way of softening up things, you could even just play the Barrascuda in your Cramorant Aracuda deck if you wanted to, just to finish things off. I think that's a very powerful attack. Uh, certainly seems very strong. Uh, but of course, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX does kind of threaten the life and the livelihood of single prizes ever, everywhere. Because, you know, after an Alter Creation GX, they're just going to be taking two prizes on your boy Barrascuda. So that makes me feel bad, but... Aside from that, I mean, that Barrascuda reads pretty good. That's a pretty powerful attack, and I wouldn't be surprised if this kind of, uh, you know, combination here eventually makes itself a, you know, kind of fringe playable card. I mean, the Esper was a good card. I mean, the Esper did see some play. It kind of had its window. It had its 15 minutes. It's in fame and, you know, had its time to shine. Barrascuda could also have its time to shine. That's just a very powerful snipe attack we have here. Who doesn't love a gigantic, chonky, Pikachu. I think we can all agree that Gigantamax Pikachu is extremely cool. Pikachu VMAX is extremely cool. 310 HP. I love the artwork on this thing. I love the lightning tail coming out of it. I love his little hands who are sitting here resting on its belly. Just look at Pikachu rubbing its belly. It's got its belly. It's like a sumo wrestler, but it's a Pikachu and I love it. And it looks happy and content. It looks like it hasn't stressed a single day in its life. And I aspire to be like this Pikachu, just chilling with electric tail, rubbing my tummy. Looks great. Wow. And it's got an attack too. So let's go ahead and get on over to that. G-Max Volt Tackle, 120 damage plus for three lightning energy. You may discard all energy from this Pokemon. If you do, this attack does 150 more damage. So 270 is going to one-hit KO, you know, your tag team Pokemon GX, except for ADP. But all the 271s, you can one-hit KO. You can one-hit KO Mewtwo and Mew, tag team GX. You can one-hit KO Zashi and V at the low, low cost of having to discard all your energy from the Pikachu VMAX. So that is not a low, low cost. I'm lying. That's an extremely steep cost. And then 120 damage base 
is also pretty rough because you don't actually really KO anything with 120 base. What I wish is that it did 160 base and then you could discard to do like 110 more. That would be much better because G-Max Volt Tackle could then still knock out to Denny's or something like that. Or 180 base plus 90 if you discard would be way better because you could knock out Crobats. But Pikachu V-Max not being able to knock out Crobats without discarding, not being able to knock out to Denny's without discarding is really, really tough. Uh, that being said, the artwork is beautiful. I think that uh, unfortunately it's just kind of too high of a cost for too low of an output, you know, especially since Pikachu VMAX does just have a lot of other competition right now in the lightning sphere, right? It would be a lot of other competition. And there's Pikachu and Zekrom tag team GX. There's Raichu and Alolan Raichu. There's Boltund, right? There's just all these dudes who want to be in the lightning deck. You know, there's even more Pico VMAX who more Pico VMAX arguably could be better than Pikachu VMAX. Uh, that being said, I think Pikachu VMAX is becoming one of the most collectible cards in this set because it's got that nostalgic artwork. This is a beautiful card. Collectors want this thing because it reminds them of their uh, it reminds them of their childhood and what Pikachu used to look like before the redesign of Pikachu. I think this Pikachu VMAX right here is is becoming like the chase card of this set. So definitely if you pull the Pikachu, very, very cool because that is a huge chase card in the set. I think a lot of collectors really like the classic design of Pikachu. You can even compare directly to Pikachu V. Pikachu V is like, you know, pre-pandemic Andrew Mahone and then Pikachu V Max is like pandemic, you know, eight months of pandemic Mahone. This is like the difference. It was like me eight months ago versus me today. Uh, you know, in Pikachu form, which is really cute and it makes me feel less bad about it. So we do like that. Pikachu V has got the charge attack. Search your deck for up to two lightning energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon. Then shuffle your deck. So that's pretty good. It can accelerate energy to itself. And then Thunderbolt for two lightning and a colorless deals 200 damage. And you have to discard all energy from this Pokemon. Now, there is something that you can do to help charge energy onto your Pikachus. We've got the brand new electrode from vivid voltage and i love electrodes man they've always got the coolest abilities buzz zap generator reminding us of the buzz zap ability or pokemon power i should say from base set electrode has a similar effect once during your turn if this pokemon is on your bench you may search your deck for up to two lightning energy cards and attach them to your lightning pokemon in any way you like then shuffle your deck if you search your deck in this way this pokemon is knocked out so you sack a prize you search your deck for two lightning energy cards and attach them to one of your lightning Pokemon. I think this card has potential. There have been a lot of uses for these Pokemon that give up a single prize in order to do a valuable effect. Miss Magia saw a lot of play. Magneton started seeing play. Uh, we saw the Melodic that just got banned from expanded format because it was so good, right? Now, this Electrode kind of does what melodic did but only for lightning type pokemon so it makes me think that this card may just be good i think that the electrode will have to find obviously a certain home uh you know but and it does only accelerate to lightning pokemon but uh i think that the electrode is a powerful energy acceleration option obviously electro does have some other cards to compete with as far as energy acceleration for lightning types bolt on v uh, can electrify for just one energy and get energy into play for free, which is nice. And then, of course, there's Tapu Koko Prism Star. But who doesn't like more lightning-type uh, acceleration? I think that this card uh, has a lot of potential. And then giving up a prize in the Pokemon trading card game is something that can be seen as a bonus if you are playing a deck that can help accommodate that in the prize trade. And if you're playing a deck that has some way to really benefit from being behind on prizes early, you know, expanded format, there's Ace Trainer and standard format is cards like Reset Stamp and so on and so forth, which can be uh, very powerful as well. So I think the Electro is certainly a very interesting card, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of lightning decks accommodate for it. The third evolution, we have got Jolteon with the Thunderous Awakening ability. If this Pokemon has a memory capsule attached, water Pokemon in play have no abilities. Poor Frostmoth hasn't even really ever been 
super good yet. And then there's a card that can turn off its ability. Uh, unfortunately, there are no real water Pokemon abilities that you're going to want to turn off with Thunderous Awakening. So just like the Vaporeon and the Flareon that we have seen, this Jolteon will do you best in the binder. I love Zapdos. Zapdos, one of my top five favorite Pokemon. Zapdos owns. This artwork rocks. It's got two attacks. 110 HP. Drill Pack does 20 damage for one colorless energy. Thunder Snipe. Two lightning and a colorless. Discard all energy from this Pokemon. Why? This attack does 160 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon V or Pokemon GX. Obviously, a strong effect. You can one-hit KO to Denny's. You can almost one-hit KO Crobats. You can finish off Pokemon V or Pokemon V Max that you may have kind of softened up already on your opponent's bench, but a very steep cost obviously you could accelerate to zapdos with the electrode we just looked at but are you really going to want to sack one prize just to power up a zapdos who is also probably going to get knocked out in one hit just so that you could then maybe knock out a dedene gx on your opponent's side of the field no you're never going to want to do that that doesn't make any sense because it's just zapdos isn't big enough to want to put energy onto with electrode if you're blowing up an electrode and you're sacking a prize in order to blow up the electrode you're certainly going to want to put those lightning energy onto somebody who is very big and unfortunately zapdos is not very big thunder snipe taking three energy to use is i think going to keep this card from ever seeing play if thunder snipe was just a lightning and one colorless you could argue that in a, like a picarom deck you could just energy switch off at the end of the game and use it but requiring three energy means that this thing is going to take some serious uh some serious investment in order to really get up and rolling and i think that attack cost is just a little bit too steep for it to ever be really good Ampharos V has got an amazing artwork. Love the pose on this card. 210 HP and two attacks. Dazzle Blast for a lightning and a colorless. Deals 50 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. I think status, status conditions are pretty good in the Pokemon trading card game because of the fact that we've got these big Hulk and Pokemon V Max that. Uh, uh, you know, give up multiple prizes. If you can confuse one or paralyze one, you know, keep it from attacking in any kind of way that's usually pretty good. That being said, Dazzle Blast for Lightning and Colorless, is it better than Vikavolt V's, you know, paralyzing bolts, which uh, item locks for the same cost? It does the same amount of damage. I think Vikavolt probably is just better. And then there's Damaging Spark for two Lightning and a Colorless, does 120 damage to this Pokemon, also does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon that have any damage counters on it. So we have a similar snipe style attack to the Galarian Darmanitan VMAX. Obviously, you can boost that Ampharos' Damaging Spark snipe damage with the goggles that we showed off earlier. Telescopic Sight could make it so that you're doing 60 damage to bench Pokemon, you know, Dedenne GXs, Crobat Vs, things like that, but you're going to have to ping them with a damage counter first in order for that to really work, which is starting to sound to me like a Wombo combo. When we talk about Wombo combos, it just, it takes too much to actually get this thing up and rolling. We're talking about a format with Zacian V, who accelerates energy to itself and does 230 damage for three energy. So unfortunately, Ampharos V, I think it does not do anything better than other cards that we have seen. Dazzle Blast just, you know, uh, a little bit worse than a card like, you know, Vikavolt V using Paralyzing Bolt. And then Damaging Spark, as far as a snipe attack goes, probably just a little bit worse than uh, Galarian Darmanitan. This Raikou looks incredible, and it, I know I keep saying it, but the artwork in Vivid Voltage is definitely top-notch. The amazing rares look phenomenal. I love Raikou. It's probably my favorite of the legendary dogs as well, or cats, or whatever. Legendary mountain lions, legendary tigers. Yeah, you know, the legendary trio from gold and silver. You know what they are. The legendary beasts, chat. The cat dog-like beasts. The legendary quadrupeds. You know what I'm talking about. Raikou has one attack and one attack only for a grass, a lightning, and a metal. Amazing shot, does 120 damage, and also snipes 120 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So 120, 120, that's pretty good. It's like a miniature Tag Bolt GX, right? Which does 200 and then 170, but obviously requires six. Now getting energy onto the Raikou is not going to be the easiest thing to do, but there is a vanilla energy accelerator in this set. I'm gonna talk about it later, but the Trumbeak, I mean, Trumbeak, Charging Trumpet, maybe there's like a Trumbeak, you know, Amazing Rare Box deck out there. Charging Trumpet, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may look at the top three cards of your deck and attach any number of basic energy you find there to your Pokemon in any way you like. Really, I had to skip to the Trumbeak because we were gonna eventually going to have to talk about the Trumbeak because the Trumbeak 
is sick, right? You can use Oranguru and the Primate Wisdom ability to put an energy on top of your deck. You can Trumbeak, Charging Trumpet, and then it's just vanilla energy acceleration. That's just what is, is what it is, you know, with Charging Trumpet. So you could yeah, maybe, you know, gas up some crazy amazing rare attacks with the Trumbeak and then use Oranguru and Viridians. You know, Viridian, get whatever energy you want. Oranguru, put it on top of your deck, Trumbeak, and then you could scoop up Net and you could reuse the Trumbeaks. You know, it's just... That, it's a combo that exists. Does that sound like a wombo combo to you? Yeah, probably, but it's cool, all right? And I like cool stuff, and I like cards that do cool things, and Raikou is definitely a card that does a cool thing. 120-120 is a pretty good snipe attack. You're two-hit KOing uh, cards like Dedenne and Crobat and Zacian. However, if you do it twice, you take four prizes, assuming that your, oppo your opponent has, like, you know, two two-prize Pokemon in play uh, that would get Amazing Shot you know, for a two hit KO. So, you know, if your opponent's got two Zacians in play and you go amazing shot twice, you're going to take four prizes in two turns, which is pretty good. So it's, you know, high end potential is there, but is it ever going to be easy enough to charge up? I think that's the big question for a lot of these amazing rare cards. I just have a huge bias towards lightning type Pokemon because I also love this Manetric. It's got the high speed ability when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may draw three cards, which I think is awesome. You can pair it with Scoop Up Net and you can have turns that are just very explosive. If you've got multiple Electric, uh, multiple, uh, you know, Manetric in your hand, you can use high speed, scoop up net, high speed again, and you just have explosive turns where you just draw six cards, and uh, I think that that's a very cool engine that could be a kind of alternative to the Jirachi Stellar Wish engine. If you just want to see cards and draw cards, this ability could be neat, and I think, you know, could exist as a potential alternative to your more traditional like Dedenne Crobat engines. Now, uh, what archetype is, would it pair with? You know, where would this card actually go? All I'm saying is that the potential is there and obviously it combines with Scoop Up Net. And I think that uh, yeah, it's certainly a card that could eventually maybe see some play or it might just sit the sidelines and just let Dedenne GX and Crobat V do all the heavy lifting as far as draw power in standard format. But I like this ability. I like that it combos with Scoop Up Net and I really do hope that something like this eventually becomes good. This Zekrom is definitely the goofiest looking Zekrom ever printed. It's, it's a little bit of a goober. This is definitely the goober Zekrom. Of all the Zekroms that I've ever seen, usually very tough. This one, Goober City. All right, it's got two attacks, slash 30 damage for two colorless energy, but Wild Shock is actually pretty interesting. For two lightning and a colorless, deals 130 damage. This Pokemon also does 60 damage to itself, and it guarantees automatic paralysis on your opponent's active Pokemon. Now, auto paralysis is cool. That being said, a lot of decks are playing a maxed out copy of Switch right now. So like there are a lot of decks that are just playing for Switch because obviously, you know, Raichu and Alolan Raichu is kind of the ultimate paralyzer, right? That being said, you know, maybe Wild Shock is a attack that, you know, we could see utilized in some kind of way. You could Wild Shock twice before you knock yourself out, which is kind of cool. And 130 damage is actually enough damage to knock out threats like Volcanion and Jirachi and just actually act as a vanilla a vanilla non uh, GX non V attacker. So I think Wild Shock, kind of a decent attack, certainly kind of interesting. And uh, if you're looking for a one prize Pokemon to put into your Picarom deck and you don't like the idea of, uh, you know, just folding to Decidueye, you know, maybe Zekrom's a card that you could think about including. Clefable with the Lunar Blessing ability reads, once during your turn, if your active Pokemon has any psychic energy attached to it, you may heal 20 damage from it and it recovers from a special condition. So if you've got like four Clefable on your bench and you're playing a deck, a psychic deck, you could heal 80 damage from your active Pokemon or whatever Pokemon that has any psychic energy attached to it. It doesn't even have to be a psychic deck. It could just be a deck that runs Aurora energy or a deck that has psychic energy in it. It could be a Mewtwo Mew deck. It could be a Gardevoir VMAX deck. I mean, yeah. So, like, obviously, you could heal a ton of damage from your Gardevoir V, but it's still weak to metal at the end of the day. So, uh, I wonder if this Lunar Blessing ability is ever going to see its time in the spotlight. I think it is 
certainly interesting, but in DDV also already uh, exists, and DDV just is kind of an easier card to accommodate. So I think that as far as comparing Clefable to Indeedee goes, I think Indeedee is kind of just better than Clefable. Now, Bonnet is a really sick card. I love this thing. The artwork is top notch. The ability is crazy. And the attack is something you'll never use. All right, 90 HP, the ability Curse of Devolution. I'm interested. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may devolve one of your opponent's bench Pokemon uh, by putting the highest stage evolution card into your opponent's hand. Curse of Devolution is really good. I mean, Pokemon VMAX have 300 plus HP now. That can be very difficult for Pokemon to reach. But what if you just didn't have to reach that? What if you could just Curse of Devolution and just knock them out, right? So when you combine Bonnet with cards like Zashi and V, who conveniently does 230 damage for just three energy and has this super cool ability, Intrepid Sword, which accelerates energy to itself and also draws three cards from the top of the deck, one of the most consistency, consistent, most broken cards ever printed in the history of the Pokemon trading card game, Brave Blade could deal 230 damage to a Pokemon VMAX, and then you could use Fion, and you could push that VMAX to the bench, and you could evolve into Bonnet, and you could take your two prizes. And then you could Brave Blade again, right? So that's pretty sick. Just imagine the combinations, chat. Imagine your opponent's got a big Senti Scorch. Should be, you know, kind of intimidating for a Zacian to knock out a Senti Scorch. But what if you used Fion to push the Senti Scorch to the bench and use Bonnet to devolve the Senti Scorch and then use Boss's orders to bring the Senti Scorch V back into the active position and Brave Blade it for knockout? be kind of sick now it's a little bit of a wombo combo but if anybody can pull it off zashi and v can all right if anybody can pull that combo off it's zashi and i think the bonnet is certainly very cool and it also gives pokemon that do not have a chance to one hit ko pokemon v max an opportunity to do so so i think that's kind of interesting uh it could even work with just single prize decks i mean even if you're just thinking about uh a deck like Galisopod or something like that. You know, you could play it alongside Galisopod. You know, Galisopod sometimes has a difficult time reaching that 330 threshold, but has much easier time kind of hitting that mid-range. You know, maybe Bonnet ends up seeing some play in some rogue-style decks as well. Also, Bonnet does conveniently get you around Decidueye. So if you're up against Decidueyes, if you've got Decidueye problems and you're a Zashi and V and you can't typically hit into Decidueyes, you can Bonnet, Curse of Devolution, you know, bop that Decidueye back to your opponent's hand, gust it out, knock out the Rowlet, and it is uh, out of there. So I think this is a very strong ability. What context will it eventually see play in? You know, I'm not sure, but it is a very strong ability. And my gut reaction says that Zashi and V is going to be a good pair for this thing. Dusknor has always got a cool ability, and this one is no different. Spectral Breach. All special energy attached to Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, provide colorless energy and have no other effects, which reminds me of Light Dragonite from the Neo Genesis era. So... You got a little bit of a history lesson here with a miraculous wind Pokemon power. As long as Light Dragonite is your active Pokemon, each special energy card provides colorless instead of its usual type, and its other effects stop working. It's like the Light Dragonite of the modern era, but it doesn't have to be in the active position, which is very good because its attack is not very strong. So if there was a deck that existed that only played special energy that you wanted to counter, Spectral Breach could help you to do that. And... Uh, yeah, so very niche use, but pretty good at what it does. I love Whimsicott. Whimsicott's awesome. We got Whimsicott's over here, and we got Whimsicott's over there, because Whimsicott's one of my favorite Pokemon. This one's even got some pretty cool attacks. Triple, triple draw for colorless energy draws you three cards. And then Flying Fury for a Psychic Energy does 10 damage plus 40 more damage for each Pokemon tool card you discard from your side of the board. And if you have six tool cards in play you're active and five bench Pokemon, then you're going to be dealing 250 damage. Six times four is 24 plus 10. Yeah, 250 damage. 
pretty significant for one energy. Now, if only there was a way to get your tools back from the discard pile. Oh wait, there is. Garbodor with the Trash Cyclone attack. This attack does 30 damage for each Pokemon tool card in your discard pile. Then you shuffle those tools back into your deck. Now, if only there was a tool card that automatically brought itself back from the discard pile. Oh wait, there is. U-turn board, no, here it is, U-turn board, yes. It automatically goes back to your hand when it gets put into the discard pile. So there are some tricks you could pull off with this Whimsicott and its Flying Fury attack. You could either pair it with Garbodor to replenish the tools back into your deck, or you can pair it with U-turn board. And when you discard the U-turn boards with Flying Fury, they come right back to the hand. And you can lay them back down, and you can do it again. So I think Whimsicott U-Turn Board certainly very interesting. It makes me wish that there was a second tool that kind of refreshed itself like U-Turn Board, but even so, you know, free retreat on this thing? Let's go. Insane, right? So I think that uh, Whimsicott, very cool Pokemon and certainly something that uh, I'm sure a lot of deck tinkerers are going to get to try and work. I heard they banned Sableye from expanded format, so Xerneas could get in there with its Geo Hunt attack. Puts a card from your discard pile into your hand. It's like Junk Hunt Mini. No, you can't have Junk Hunt because we got Geo Hunt at home, right? Put a card from your discard pile into your hand. All right, and then Aurora gain two psychic energy and a colorless does 100 damage, heals 30 damage from this Pokemon. Geo Hunt, Junk Hunt was good. You know, we got Sableye V gets a single card back from the discard pile. Geo Hunt, will this be strong enough to actually warrant play? We'll have to see. Zacian, always the golden dog. I mean, what an incredible card. Psychic type Pokemon, Sword Doggo, amazing rare artwork, looking like it just got done with one of those. What are the, the runs? And you go on the run and then they, they throw the colored chalk at you. I did one of them once, but I forget what it's called. Anyway, Zacian looks like it's running one of those things. It's like the 5K is the color run. I think called the color run. I, I don't know. Anyways, I did one of them once. And Zashian looks like it's participating. That joke would have gone way better had I actually known that, yes, it was called the color run. Very good. Yes. Pretty sure that's what that is. Anyways, Zashian looks like it just got done with one of those. And uh, a very pretty, nice looking card. And then uh, it's got the attack metal. Ar metal. Yo, you guys are really getting to see me at my worst right now. Metal Armament. Don't make me say that word first try on stream. 30 damage. Attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So it's nice. It accelerates to itself. And it's got the amazing sword attack for a grass, psychic, and a metal. It's 150 damage. And if your opponent has any Pokemon VMAX in play, it does 150 more. 300 damage for three energy. That's 100 damage per energy. It's crazy. With the low, low cost of your opponent just having to have a Pokemon VMAX in play. And, of course, it costs a Grass, a Psychic, and a Metal. So, going to be very difficult to power up. But I think that, uh, you know, 300 damage is pretty alluring. I think that, you know, there's obviously Malamar and Expanded Format could get you the Psychic. But then the Grass and the Metal, where are those coming from? There's Max Elixir in Expanded Format. You know, but there are no VMAX in expanded format so i think like are you actually going to go through the trouble of putting a grass a psychic and a metal energy onto the zashin to do 300 damage but only to pokemon you know only if your opponent has a pokemon vmax in play uh probably not but it is very interesting top end power is very strong 150 damage just short of where you wanted to be to knock out to denes and stuff like that and it's just short of a natural uh, i sh should say yeah short of a um yeah, well, it's not short of a 2 hit KO on VMAXs. That's what I was going to say, but no. You do 300 damage to VMAXs, which is short of a 1-hit KO on most VMAXs. So, uh, decent card, uh, but I don't think that it will actually see much play. Uh, but please prove me wrong, because it'd be awesome if it did. Here they are, chats. Potentially the best Pokemon V and Pokemon VMAX in the set. Colossal V, Colossal VMAX. I also do really like Orbital V and Orbital VMAX, so those guys, I think probably also give these guys a run for their money but just checking through maybe i'm wrong but i think colossal v and colossal v max are certainly my favorite pokemon v and pokemon v max from the set uh, obviously being able to 
one hit KO. Pikachu and Zekrom tag team GX being able to one hit KO. Eternatus V Max is quite a lure. 330 HP is absolutely massive. Fighting type Pokemon. Eruption shot for a single fighting energy does 40 damage plus 90 more damage. Uh, if the top card of your deck is an energy card and you get to discard that card, and if it's an energy, you attach it to this Pokemon. So it accelerates to itself, obviously combos with the Primate Wisdom Orangaroo. You can stack an energy onto the top of your deck. Eruption Shot, guarantee that 130 base damage for one energy. Now, if you combo that with Fighting Dojo, then you could deal uh, base 140 damage, which would do 280 damage to an Eternatus VMAX if you're playing with a Vitality Band. Um, you could do base 150, so you're dealing 300 damage. So still not going to be able to hit that one hit KO on an Eternatus VMAX unless you've got Fighting Dojo in play and you are uh, and you are also behind on prizes. So that is quite a bit to knock out those uh, pesky Eternatus VMAX. That being said, you're probably going to be dodging one hit KOs from Eternatus VMAX in return, since you do have 330 HP, you could sweeten that with big charms, things like that, make your guy uh, a little bit bigger even still. And then, of course, if you eruption shot enough and you get enough energy onto your Colossal VMAX, you could use G-Max Boulder, which deals 240 damage for three fighting and a colorless. So that is just a really cool, efficient one energy attacker. I love the idea of just firing off eruption shots. You can knock out Dedene with uh, Eruption Shot for one energy. You can knock out Crobat V for one energy. You can knock out Picaroms for one energy. So there's a lot of popular targets that Colossal VMAX does just completely obliterate for one energy. So I think that that is, uh, that is a very powerful attack with uh, some good potential. I think it does everything that I kind of like about the Don fan, but it's just a bigger dude, right? And in the Pokemon trading card game right now, big dudes are usually better if like i can just uh you know do what i could do on a little dude but i could do it on a big dude it's probably going to be a uh, you're gonna have a little bit of a better time now colossal v 220 hp has got the searing flame attack for two fighting and a colorless 90 damage and your opponent's active pokemon is now burned i love the colossal line as well just because i think this is probably my favorite pokemon from sword and shield colossal is just so cool it's got like a little volcano hat what's not amazing about that searing flame 90 damage and inflicting burn i love the fact that a fighting pokemon's inflicting burn i think that's so sick and then boulder crush for three fighting and a colorless does 180 damage you could also pair this with the colossal non v card right to accelerate what fire and fighting energy from the discard pile to it to power up g max boulder even more you could do that is it necessary probably not you could also you know pair colossal v max with hyper potion that's something that i've thought about since eruption shot uh does 130 damage and accelerates that energy that you discarded off the top of the deck to itself right then you end the turn with two energy attached to yourself you could then hyper potion discard the two energy put a new energy back onto the colossal and you're ready to eruption shot again so i think that playing the colossal you could play it tanky you could play it aggressive to utilize that 240 damage g max boulder uh there are a lot of different ways you could play this card and i think that the card certainly gets me very interested to play around with a fighting type archetype and i think it could be pretty good in the formats to come Zamazenta Amazing Rare. I don't know how Shield Doggo always gets the short end of the stick, but Shield Doggo just doesn't look as cool as Sword Doggo. It's like, you know, Shield Doggo's got the older brother Sword Doggo. Sword Doggo gets all the scholarships to college and, you know, is captain of all the sports teams. And Shield Doggo is, you know, uh, just the, the little brother that never quite added up and, you know, doesn't quite look as cool and doesn't quite do anything as good as Sword Doggo does. And, you know, and it feels really bad, but that's okay, Zamazenta. I love you. I think you're a beautiful card. Don't let Sword Doggo talk bad about you, okay? Even though Sword Doggo's got a way, I don't want to say cooler, but kind of got a cooler artwork, okay, Zamacenta? We still love you very much. Your fighting-type Pokemon, that makes you way cooler than Zacian, just period, because fighting-type Pokemon are awesome. It's got a fighting-type fighting, fighting type Pokemon, 110 HP, and for a colorless energy, Metal Armament. I have to say it again. 
30 damage and attach a basic energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. And then Amazing Shield for a Lightning and Fighting and a Metal Energy. 180 damage during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your uh, from Pokemon VMAX. Now, what's really cool about Zamazenta is unlike Zacian, right? Even though Zacian's got the cooler artwork. Unlike Zacian, whose amazing sword is kind of situational and weird and, you know, doing 150 damage doesn't really do anything and doing, you know, 300 damage to a VMAX doesn't really do anything. Uh, this card, on the other hand, you can use Tapu Koko Prism Star to power it up. I like that. You can uh, also one-hit KO Eternity's VMAX. I like that. You can one-hit KO Picaram. I like that. Uh, you can easily one-hit KO Dedenny's and Crobats. I like that, right? So I actually think Zamazenta... The Amazing Rare is just better than Zashi and Amazing Rare. This is the better card. Absolutely. It's just, it's a better type. It has a better attack. It has better effect. Uh, it's just better in every way. Uh, it can wear, oh, a, a karate belt. Can it wear a karate belt? Let's look up karate belt real quick. And I actually want to read karate belts, right? Karate belt. Karate belt, if you have... More prize cards remaining than your opponent. The attack of this Pokemon is uh, one fighting less. It can wear karate belts, right? So you could use the attack for just a lightning and a metal if you're behind on prizes. So that's interesting. I think that uh, Zamazenta is potentially the best amazing rare in the set. Uh, there's Jirachi too. I think Jirachi may be Rayquaza, but Zamazenta might be my favorite uh, amazing rare in the set. And it might be the one with the most potential i think it's fighting typing is really strong as i said and preventing damage in return from pokemon v max is pretty good i mean it can completely wall off uh eternatus v max decks you know eternatus not having an easy way to swing into this would certainly be kind of annoying especially if you get to amazing shield twice against an eternatus v max deck then they're kind of just donezo right so i think that uh zamasenta very very cool card big drapion v the only dark type V Pokemon from this set, 210 HP. It's got two attacks, Rackdown for a dark and two colorless, 70 damage, and then Hazardous Claws for a dark and three colorless energy, deals 130 damage, discard two energy from this Pokemon. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned. So a very interesting effect, but a very expensive cost. This Drapion, really you're only going to use if you're playing a Hydreigon deck. So if you're setting up Hydreigon, you could go for the Hazardous Claws and automatically inflict Paralysis, which is cool, but I would argue if you're playing a Hydreigon Dark Box deck, you're probably probably just better off juicing up some big, hefty Pokemon Tag Team GX and using like Dark Moon or using Greedy Crush or something like that, rather than going for the 130 damage and paralysis. So unfortunately, Drapion just outclassed by other more powerful Darkness type Pokemon. Now, Steelix V has got potentially the meanest mug I ever did see on a... Steelix, maybe on a Pokemon card ever. This thing is definitely very gnarly. Raging Hammer for a metal and a colorless does 30 plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon, and it's got 250 HP. So that's a lot of hit points. And you could put, you know, a cape of toughness on this thing, and then it's just got like 300 hit points. And then it also could just dish out Raging Hammers. If you don't KO it, we're coming in with the Raging Hammer and just doing a lot of damage. So that's kind of cool. And then Iron Tackle iron tackle for a Metal and 4 Colorless does 210 damage, and it does 30 damage to itself, powering up its own Raging Hammer. Cool card. It uh, is a big card, but I think that we've seen, as far as Metal Pokemon go right now, speed is better. Uh, the tanky Metal decks, you know, we're talking Lucario Mel Metal, plays Zacian V and Zamazenta, is the room for Steelix V in that equation? Probably not. Uh, you know, I think at this point we've seen the Zashi and Zamazenta and Lucario Melmetal are like the three major metal Pokemon to compete with in standard format. And if you're not pumping out numbers as good as those guys are, you know, you're probably just going to get passed up. So that's my fear with Steelix V. It's a very stiff competition competition amongst metal type Pokemon, but a very cool card. And Raging Hammer is certainly kind of kind of sick, paired with such hefty HP and the potential to wear Cape of Toughness as well. 
Amazing Rare Jirachi, a very popular Amazing Rare from this set. It's got the Dreamy Revelation ability. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Put the other card back on top of your deck. So it's kind of like an interesting combination of Jirachi from Team Up, but then also Pidgeotto from Team Up. Pidgeotto's Airmail looks at the top two, puts one on the bottom, one to your hand. Uh, Jirachi from Team Up looks at the top five, takes a trainer card and puts it into your hand, shuffles the rest back into the deck. Jirachi with the Dreamy Revelation, you get to look at the top two cards of your deck and then put one and the other one goes back to the top of your deck, which is weird because you didn't want that card. So then it's going back on top of your deck. It does give you additional draw. It does have the same name as Jirachi from Team Up. So even though this is an amazing rare, uh, there's nothing on the card that really kind of constitute it being different than the Jirachi from Team Up. So uh, you can't uh, you can't play four Jirachi from Team Up and then play some amazing rare Jirachis. You just can't. They have the same name, so you can't. You can only play four of either of them. So the question, you know, is that ability good enough to make this card worth playing? I mean, it's certainly interesting because you could play it with U-turn boards, right? So you could just because it doesn't put itself to sleep. So you could play this with a U-turn board and just like kind of skid it in and out of the active position and use the Dreamy Revelation to just get you more cards off the top of your deck. So I think it's certainly not a bad card. It's interesting, uh, but it does have a lot of competition in that realm. Now, Amazing Star for a Psychic, a Fighting, and a Metal allows you to search your deck for up to seven basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. It's Exodia, baby. It's Exodia. Amazing Star. You get three energy on this thing, and then you get to search your deck for seven basic energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. You can attach them to GXs. You can attach them to V, V Max, whatever, tag teams, you know, your Decidueyes. I mean, it doesn't, whatever Pokemon you can imagine, you can gas up with this amazing rare Jirachi. So, the obviously the easiest way to start to get this thing powered up you can saucer a metal energy on but then you have to get the fighting and the psychic energy on uh having the three attack cost is obviously very difficult but the upside that's like that's like stronger than a gx attack i mean but at what cost and that's kind of the um that's that's stronger than like soul burst gx y'all all my homies remember soul burst gx you guys remember uh soul galio right you guys remember soul burst gx I remember Soul Burst GX. Where are you? Prominence GX, not you. Soul Burst GX. There, you guys remember Soul Burst GX? Soul Burst GX, search your deck for up to five energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way. Like, this is like search your deck for seven. That's crazy. All right? It's quite a bit. So, but it, at what cost? And I think that's going to be the, the kind of big existential question for a lot of these amazing rare cards is like, yes, they have the most insane attacks, but at what cost, right? Because at the end of the day, you're setting up a Jirachi to then set up more Pokemon. So those Pokemon that you're setting up, you're, it's like a setup to set up. You're setting up, a, you're setting up a 70 HP Pokemon with three energy on it in order to set up more Pokemon. Whoever, that's a very roundabout way of getting seven more energies into play. There better be some insane combo that you're working towards if you're going to go through the effort of putting three different types of basic energy on a 70 HP Pokemon. So, uh, very interesting card, and the Dreamy Revelation ability is certainly not bad. Like I said, pairing with U-Turn Board is certainly something to keep in mind. Decidueye players hate him. Aegislash V. 210 HP, the slash attack for metal and a colorless does 50 damage. And then Sonic Edge for two metal and a colorless deals 130 damage. And this attack's damage is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. That means Decidueye's ability. This goes right through it. Obstagoon's Obstruct attack. This goes right through it. And there's no stopping it. Age Slash is just going to be able to Sonic Edge its way through whatever sort of obstacle there may have been. And what's interesting, right about the Aegislash V is that the threat of Aegislash V existing at all might just make people stop playing Decidueye Obstagoon. You just might not ever see an Altaria deck again just because this card exists. So then what will happen is that people will stop playing this card in their ADP decks. And of course, Sonic, Sonic Edge does take the knockout. Assuming that you're playing this in uh, RCS Dialga and Palkia, after an Alter Creation GX, Sonic Edge is going to be dealing 160 damage, perfectly one-hit KOing 
and Obstagoon and a Decidueye. So the interesting thing about this card is that the threat of it alone might stop Decidueye and Obstagoon and Altaria decks altogether, and then people will actually take the Age Slash out of their deck because they don't want to have to play it. People were already playing Duraludon. Some people played Duraludon in their ADP Zacian decks. They didn't want to play it, though. They just played it as a threat to take out you know, Decidueye uh, decks. But then eventually, as we kind of saw the meta evolve, people started taking the Duraludon out of their deck. I think Aegis Slash is a card that we're going to see go in and out of the ADP decks. As people play more Decidueye Obstagoon style attack, you know, style decks, uh, you'll see Aegis Slash get tossed in. But then as people stop playing those decks, people are going to take the Aegis Slash out because honestly, Sonic Edge just doesn't deal as much damage as Zacian V's Brave Blade. And uh, it doesn't even one-hit KO a Dedene because of Dedene GX's metal resistance after a boost from Altered Creation. Now, Age Slash V does evolve into Age Slash V Max, 320 HP, and it's got the max hack attack for two metal and a colorless 160 damage. This attack does 30 more damage for each prize card you have taken. Usually the way the ADP Zacian decks go is that they Alter Creation, and then they boss, and they take three prizes, right? So then max hack has one turn to deal what three prizes so you're dealing 90 plus 90 damage 250 damage plus the ultra creation boost you'd be dealing 280 damage uh to potentially finish off the game i think the aegis slash v max is a little bit redundant in an adp zashian deck because of the fact that adp zashian only has to attack twice you have to ask yourself you know what role does aegis slash v max actually fulfill in an adp deck that zashian doesn't fill, fulfill you know, the ADP doesn't fulfill. Now, obviously, Age Slash V does fulfill a role. It actually KOs Obstagoon to Decidueye. That's a role. It's a role that neither, you know, ADP or Zacian fulfills. So this card could be valuable in the deck. Do I think that you'll actually need to go as far as to include Age Slash V Max? No, probably not. Though it is a pretty interesting card and it does have, you know, a pretty decent high end potential damage output. Uh, I think that. The better of the two, interestingly, is just Age of Slash V. Age of Slash V is the real alt star here. And I think Age of Slash V will certainly see way more play than Age of Slash V Max. Rayquaza, amazing rare. 120 HP, got that amazing color run style artwork, you know, splatter behind it. And the amazing burst attack. For a Grass of Lightning and a Fighting Energy, you can discard all basic energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 80 damage for each type of basic energy you discarded in this way. Hmm. So you're telling me I can one-hit KO things. You know, it makes you think about expanded format, right? Expanded format, there was the Ho-Oh EX. You guys remember Ho-Oh, Ho-Oh, ho ho I'm in my Christmas mode. Ho-Oh EX. You guys remember Ho-Oh EX? Not that one, the good one, this one. No, no, no $15 cash back. This card, you guys remember this card, right? Ho-O-E-X with a rebirth ability makes you think, yo, what if you rebirthed and then you ninja boyed and then <laughs> am I doing too much? All right, Ho-O-E-X, you get three energy onto this thing, All right? Ninja boy, and you could do, you could do grass, lightning, fighting, and then you could even put a fourth energy onto it, right? And uh, then you could deal, what, four times eight, 320 damage, amazing burst. So in expanded format, you could go Ho-O-E-X, Rebirth, Ninja Boy, you know, 320 damage in one turn. Now that's that's a lot to ask. You guys not seen Ninja Boy? You know Ninja Boy? We'll show off Ninja Boy real quick. The, you know, the crazy expanded ho oh Ninja Boy decks. Ninja Boy, right? You got your wombo combos. If you're a lover of wombo co wombo combos, I got a wombo combo for you right here. All right, Ninja Boy, choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon and switch it with that Pokemon. Any cards, damage counters, special conditions, turns to play, any effects remain on the new Pokemon, right? So you use Ninja Boy, you Ninja Boy into your Ray Ray. Boom! An amazing burst for knockout. Now, obviously, in standard format, this card is a lot more difficult to power up. Uh, you got Tapu Koko Prism Star can get you the lightning. That's cool. Uh, you got Rillaboom can get you the grass. That's cool. Then you got this fighting thing, and then you're only dealing 240 damage for discarding three, which yeah, doesn't quite get there against V Maxis. So you're gonna want the fourth type of energy. 
And then how are you getting the fourth type of energy onto this thing, like standard format? I think it's going to be very difficult to reuse Rayquaza Amazing Rare over and over and over again, uh, which is certainly what you would want to do with this kind of with this kind of card. Now, obviously, there is Trumbeak. Trumbeak is the card, right? If you're trying to build a spicy Amazing Rare deck and you want to get energy of different types all over the board, Tromboni is your bird. Trumbeaks, Charging Trumpet can get you energy out of the top of the deck and onto your Pokemon, and it can accelerate any type of energy you want. So if you've got some amazing rare dreams, Trumbeak is probably your bird. Let's go ahead and check out Togekiss V and Togekiss VMAX. Togekiss VMAX, 310 HP, weakness to lightning, which is really bad right now. But, you know, if Colossal VMAX becomes really, really, really big, we do got a nice resistance to fighting and free retreat i love a big 300 hp pokemon that gives up three prizes that has free retreat that makes me very excited max glide for two colorless energy 120 damage you may search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand i like that it's a very good attack max glide uh very low energy cost you could power this up with powerful colorless energy which could allow you to max glide for even more damage which is great and you get to get whatever cards you want out of your deck two of them and into your hand so a very cool attacker i think my issue is that it doesn't quite do a lot of damage like a baby charizard and breaks in breaks in a charizard tag team gx right uh it does a little bit less damage 180 damage on the charizard and breaks in obviously very good because it can knock out crobats it can knock out to denny's things like that max glide doesn't take those ko's unless you got two powerful colorless energies attached to it but I like the free retreat, I like the fighting resistance, and I like that you can get two cards out of your deck. So maybe some sort of control -y style deck, maybe. Obviously, you can use triple acceleration energy, but that energy gets discarded at the end of the turn. So uh, I think definitely a neat card. And then Togekiss V, 200 HP, White Wind does, uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, this attack does 70 more damage, 20 plus 70. On Evolve Pokemon for just one energy. It's not bad. Powerful colorless energy means you're going to be dealing 110 damage for just one energy to Evolved Pokemon. And then Speed Wing for three colorless energy does 130. I heard you want to put energy onto your boys. B is here to help you do just that. Discard the top five cards of your deck and attach any energy cards you discarded in this way to your bench fighting Pokemon in any way you like. You all remember ends resolve it's like ends resolve but one less card but for fighting types which are you know kind of notoriously under supported right now so any sort of support that fighting type pokemon get they're gonna gravitate to now b is interesting because you can pair b with primate wisdom oranguru you can guarantee an energy acceleration by stacking an energy with primate wisdom oranguru and then accelerate it to your benched fighting type Pokemon. Obviously, B seems like it would be partnered very well with Colossal VMAX since you're already going to be playing the Primate Wisdom Orangaroo for Colossal VMAX to Eruption Shot. If you actually ever wanted to gear up for a big G-Max boulder, uh, imagine this. I mean, you could, uh, you could Eruption Shot, accelerate an energy to yourself, and then if you B... If really you just rip one energy off the B, you're ready to use G-Max Boulder after an eruption shot. So I think that B actually could see play with Colossal V-Max. I actually think that there is certainly uh, a, a combination to be found there. And then also you can uh, discard, let's see, attach your energy cards. So you can attach them to your Zamazenta as well. If you wanted to build a Zamazenta box, B is not exclusive to fighting type energy so and zamazenta is a fighting type pokemon b is exclusive to fighting type pokemon but not fighting type energy so you can accelerate lightning fighting and a metal using b right discard the top five cards of your deck attach any energy cards special energy sounds like those work too any energy cards any of them so I think that B is certainly an interesting card, and I think that I like it more than Ends Resolve. I mean, something about Ends Resolve is that no Dragon Pokemon have been printed since Sword and Shield. So, like, obviously, Ends Resolve has kind of only been so useful. Basically, you're asking yourself, am I going to play Ends Resolve with ADP? 
Answer is no. We play Metal Saucer with ADP, so who cares? We don't need it because you can just play Metal Saucer Energy Switch. And uh, Fighting doesn't have Fighting Saucer. Fighting has B. So you, ve you very well could play B. I think B is better than cards like uh, Bead. Uh, if you're just, you know, comparing Bead to B, uh, I think B is much better than Bead because B doesn't actually require that you have anything in your hand. You just have to play the B and have a fighting Pokemon on your bench. That's it. Uh, bead, in contrast, requires that you have an energy in your hand, requires that you have the bead, and requires that you... So, so that little bit of extra requirement that you have the energy in your hand is much more difficult to pull off than B and just like letting it rip. Sometimes you're just going to let it rip. Cool. We hit two, and then you could go in with your Colossal VMAX and swing for big damage. So uh do like that card a lot. There's also... Beauty, uh, if you go first, you may play this card during your first turn, draw two cards. Is this actually good enough to see any competitive play? No, I don't think that it is. But I like the fact that they have included a supporter that has got this text on it. And I hope that Pokemon takes this kind of prototype we see here and applies this to a setup card. Pokemon, please print a card that is like Bridget or Professor Oak's setup or something like that, that just allow, or Pokemon fan club, but put this text on it. Allow it to be played during the first turn going first. Really all they need to do, Pokemon fan club, right? Print this card, right, for setup decks. Pokemon fan club, and then just add the little, the beauty text on it. Add the beauty text, allow that card to be played on the first turn going first. Setup decks will love you. Uh, it'll be great. Uh, I think that it's like a huge disservice to setup decks that you cannot play those uh, those setup supporters like Pokemon Fan Club and so on and so forth on the first turn of the game going first. Beauty, I think, is a step in the right direction. I would like to see that direction taken a little bit further by the Pokemon Company to accommodate for setup decks. Sir Chester Bath, all basic Pokemon, yours and your opponents take 20 less damage from uh, attacks from the opponent's Pokemon. Now, a lot of people have talked about playing Sir Chester Bath in your... Uh, in your Lucario and Melmetal deck. Obviously, there's a huge appeal to playing Sir Chester Bath in your Lucario and Melmetal deck because you can use uh, Full Metal Wall GX, makes you take 30 less damage from attacks. Then you can use the Metal Goggles, makes you take 30 less damage from attacks, right? And then Sir Chester Bath could make you take 20 less damage from attacks, but you have to keep in mind your attacks get decreased by 20 as well. Brave Blade does how much damage? 230 damage. How much health? Does an opposing Zacian V have 220 health? You're telling me that you're going to play Sir Chester Bath and you're going to make it so that you can't one-hit KO opposing Zacian Vs? At what cost? Not worth it, right? It's not worth it. You're taking away your one-hit KO ability on your opponent's Zacian Vs to accommodate for a card that 20 less damage, it's not worth it. I think that you're better off just going with the full metal wall. You're better off just going with the swells and the goggles. I don't think this card is necessarily worth it in Lucario and Melmetal. Uh, there have been other cards like this that have seen play. You guys remember Aether Paradise. Aether Paradise was a card that existed forever, right? This card was notoriously bad. This card got almost no play, none. Grass and Lightning Pokemon take 30 less damage from opponent's attacks. Nothing, right? And this was even one-sided, right? This was one-sided uh, in that, like, it didn't matter because, like, if you were playing a Lightning deck and your opponent wasn't playing a Lightning deck, then it only buffed you, but it still wasn't very good. So I think that Sir Chester Bath, I think, will be a middling card that doesn't see much play. Uh, I think, you know, despite the fact that, yeah, the lure of, like, really tanking and taking, like, no damage... Uh, I don't think that it's, uh, I, I think that card is certainly not as good as Aether Paradise was for, you know, Grass and Lightning decks, and very few decks, if any, played this card for Grass and Lightning decks, so I think the Sir Chester Bath will kind of suffer a similar fate. Alistair is a spooky, spooky dude. Draw three cards. If you drew any cards in this way, discard up to three cards from your hand. Good. If you're really trying to discard stuff, but I don't think it's powerful enough, uh, at the end of the day, it's just a, you know, draw three uh, with the added discard effect. If I'm going to discard a card and draw three cards, I'd rather play Cynthia and Caitlyn 100%. Cynthia and Caitlyn gets you a guaranteed card back from your discard pile. Alistair does have to compete with Cynthia and Caitlyn as a other draw three card, and Cynthia and Caitlyn is just explicitly better. Caralise, search your deck for two rare fossil cards and put them onto your bench. I think Caralise 
is cool and then it can go fetch you some rare fossils that you could evolve into your arctozolts and things like that but i mean after having the research lab stadium which just guarantees gets you an evolved fossil pokemon onto your bench i mean everything else pale just pales in comparison next to the research lab so i don't think carolise is actually good enough uh to see any play unless there you know becomes a rare fossil deck that is like insanely good uh then maybe carolise ends up seeing play just to get those fossils out of the deck but other i think i'd rather just stellar wish for my fossils and just put them down naturally to be honest rather than play carolise hero's metal is certainly really interesting because it is like the uh challenge amulet except it gets put on pokemon v max and the pokemon v max it is attached to gets minus 100 hp and if it's knocked out by damage from an attack uh, your opponent takes one fewer prize card for that attack. And you can't attach this card to a Pokemon VMAX that has 100 HP or less remaining. So it's cool because it can make all your VMAXs essentially two prize Pokemon, but then it also brings them all into KO range for Zacian V. And Zacian V kind of being the... I mean, Zashian V has kind of completely warped standard format around it, right? Zashian V has basically... How many times have I mentioned Zashian V in this video? 50? 40? I mean, a lot, right? It's not even... It's, that's not even about Zashian V. It's just that Zashian V dictates what is good in the Pokemon trading card game. And Heroes Metal takes these Pokemon V Max who are uh, out of range for Zashian V and puts them in range for Zashian V. So I would say uh, avoid Heroes Metal uh, on your Pokemon. Maybe once uh, the format changes, right? Maybe once the format changes, then uh, this could become a card that, that sees play. But I think that, uh, you know, don't be confused. I think the Challenge Amulet is a much stronger card than Heroes Metal because, uh, you know, there are support GX Pokemon that can sit on your bench and that you could just put the challenge amulet onto them like the Denny's or Corios, things like that and just make them less of a liability whereas VMAX Pokemon by and large are all attackers they're all attackers and uh you know they're going to be out there in the active position and you don't want a boosted ultra creation Zacian to just take three prizes on your weakened uh you know VMAX Pokemon you would rather that VMAX Pokemon withstand a hit right from a you know from a, a brave blade or something like that so i don't think this card will be very good but certainly interesting and could find its itself a home somewhere eventually leon obviously can get paired with the new charizard but aside from that just boosting your attacks by 30 damage i think is very strong i mean obviously uh damage boosters are one of the things in the standard format that have been kind of powered back over time right they've been kind of like reeled in uh in in days past there was choice band choice band just allowed you to hit you know gx's and ex's for plus 30 damage which was insane there was muscle band muscle band just gave you plus 20 now we have vitality band vitality band is just explicitly worse than muscle band kakui used to give us plus 20 to our uh attacks for a turn and drew us two cards Leon gives us plus 30. So Leon is the biggest damage booster that we conceivably have. It's, a, it's the biggest vanilla damage booster that we have in standard format. And we have a lot of decks that want to boost their damage. I mean, let's look at Eternatus VMAX wants to boost its damage. Hence so the fact that it plays all this poison stuff and all these Galarian Zigzagoons. 270 is just short of the mark that it wants to be at. So Eternatus VMAX looking at leon is like cool that's exactly where i want to be i want to just deal base 300 damage and then maybe my zigzagoons only have to do a little bit more that being said finding your leon using it on the key turn is not always going to be the easiest thing to do uh in the context of zashian right after an alter creation gx your zashian v is dealing a cool 260 damage and then if it has a vitality band on it it's going to deal 270 damage and then with a leon it can deal 300 damage which is still a little bit short of one hit koing pokemon v max i think that if you're playing uh rcs dialga and palkia decks you're still better off playing boss's orders over leon because zashian is just going to be able to knock out whatever's around the pokemon vx v max right uh the Dedenes, the crobats the cards that were required to set up that v max zashian can just knock it out instead of going for the knockout straight through the v max would rather just kind of like 
uh, pick off lower targets around the Pokemon VMAX. I think this card is good. I think it has a lot of potential. I think that this is a math fixer, and math fixers are very good in the Pokemon trading card game, right? Uh, and I think that if there ever arises an occasion where you need to fix some math, Leon is here to do it. You could pull it back with Eldegoss, of course, and uh, make sure that you have it in play at that right time. So I think that uh, Leon is certainly a very good supporter and we'll eventually see some play for sure. Memory Capsule is a new tool card from Vivid Voltage and the Pokemon this is attached to can use any attacks from its previous evolutions. I remember Sean took a look at this. He's like, ah, yes, Shock Lock, my Shock Lock deck. Uh, there are, uh, on occasion, Pokemon that really want to use their pre-evolution attacks you know, throughout uh, the game's history. I remember there was a Mega Mewtwo deck that really liked its ability to use Damage Swap on the Mewtwo EX beneath it, so it played Shrine of Memories to allow it to do so. Shocklock obviously likes to use um, Little Doggo's uh, pickup attack. Uh, whoever that little little Doggo is, who's the the little Stoutland miniature, Stoutland Junior? It's not Piplup. Who is it? Help me out, chat. Stoutland Junior. Who is the little guy? Pickup attack. We're stuck on it. Lillipup. I called him Piplup. Yeah. Lillipup, there he is, Stoutland Jr. Really likes Memory Capsule because you can use it to use its pickup attack, right? Uh, right now, the Shock Lock deck uses Memory Energy to use those pre-evolutions attacks. So Memory Capsule is certainly a card that has potential. These kinds of cards have seen play throughout Pokemon's history. Uh, is there an application for Memory Capsule right now that like immediately will see play? Uh, I'm not sure, but as VMAX Pokemon continue to get printed and as more and more VMAX Pokemon see play, uh, I think that Memory Capsule will make you want to keep an eye out for those kinds of combinations because having access to a pre-evolutions ability is very good, or having access to a pre-evolutions attack is uh is very good aromatic grass energy provides a grass energy as long as it's attached to a pokemon which is interesting because it even provides grass energy when it's attached to a non-grass pokemon and then it's got the bonus effect of making that pokemon recover from all special conditions if it is a grass pokemon and that grass pokemon cannot be affected by any special conditions now grass decks obviously have a very hard time right now because of the popularity of welder aromatic grass energy doesn't solve any of those existential issues for grass decks but it is a nice little buff for them to have as an archetype now coating metal energy is obviously very strong uh, coating metal energy provides a metal type energy as long as it's attached to a pokemon and the metal pokemon is attached to has no weakness what's that lucario mel metal no weakness that means your lucario mel metal deck doesn't have to play uh, weakness guard energy anymore. You could just play coating metal energy and then your Zacian V can have no weakness, which is insane. And it can take, you know, 30 less damage from attacks with its metal goggles. And then it can take 30 less damage from attacks again because of full metal wall GX. And then coating metal energy, you know, can completely negate its weakness. So I think coating metal energy is certainly going to see play in tanky Zacian decks. I don't think that ADP Zacian will need to play this card because ADP Zacian is just trying to win the game in like three turns, four turns anyway. So getting your Pokemon one hit KO'd just doesn't even matter. But Lucario Melmetal, the whole Lucario Melmetal deck is based around tanking hits, not getting one hit KO'd, and dishing out consistent damage in return. So I think coating Metal Energy will just be a four of in Lucario Melmetal. Absolutely. And then that means the fire decks are going to have to look for ways to remove these special energies from the metal type Pokemon in order to continue hitting them for weakness. And of course, there is the Dimension Breach Giratina, which can help you to do that. So coating metal energy, I think will go straight into the Cario and Metal decks. But then I think that fire decks will probably just start accommodating for the Dimension Breach Giratina to get the coating metal energy off of them. And then we're going to kind of see this back and forth between those two decks going on. Stone Fighting Energy is also really good. The Fighting Pokemon this card is attached to takes 20 less damage from attacks. Colossal VMAX is already huge. 
It's already huge, chat. It's 330 HP on that Colossal VMAX. Stone Fighting Energy can give it an effective 350 HP. Also, Stone Fighting Energy can be accelerated by B. Discard the top five cards of your deck and attach any energy cards. It does not say basic energy. So, Stone Fighting Energy can get accelerated with B, which is very cool. And I think making your Colossal VMAX even tankier is just a great idea. So I think the Stone Fighting Energy is certainly going to see play with Colossal VMAX, making that big dude even bigger. And then last, we've got the Wash Water Energy. You get to prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to the water Pokemon that this is attached to. I don't know that this is going to see any play. You can't accelerate it with Frost Moth. It's preventing the effect of an attack. Really that important for water decks, which are already just struggling to set up altogether because apparently getting Frost Moth into play and then, you know, loading a ton of water energy into play is not the most consistent thing in the world. I think Wash Water Energy, unfortunately, doesn't help with any of the consistency issues in uh, Frost Moth decks. So I think Wash Water Energy, probably the weakest of the bunch here, but Stone Fighting Energy and Coating Metal Energy are very, very strong. And then, of course, we do have the beautiful full art cards and the gold cards, uh, the Secret Rare Obstagoon. If you're an Obstagoon fan and you're not worried about that Aegislash V, oh my goodness, talk about some beautiful cards. Uh, how many times did I mention Oranguru in this set review? We've got a golden Primate Wisdom Oranguru coming out in Vivid Voltage. This card is pretty. I need one. It's so beautiful. This is the card I want above any other card in the set. This is the card that I'm definitely going to be looking to pick up for my own collection. Golden Cape of Toughness as well. Golden Heroes Metal, Golden Memory Capsule, and Golden telescopic site and the full arts look absolutely incredible the leon the nessa my goodness the design on these pokemon cards is absolutely top notch and that's it for the video thank you so much for watching make sure to like the video sub to the channel ring that bell and of course check out the twitch stream twitch.tv slash tricky gym where i stream live pokemon trading card game content every single weekday starting at about 9 a.m eastern time y'all take it easy and have a great day peace